killer. Well, we're 30 episodes in, and episode 30 actually surprised me with how well it was actually done in terms of most of the fighting, because that's what this episode really consists of. This episode really consisted of a lot of fighting. Uh, the title for episode 30 for Boruto, Naruto, and Next Generations, episode 30, is titled The Sharingan vs. The Lightning Blade Keep of the Fang. And in this episode, the the chick with the fucking with the sword Kiba s s likes to say the, the full name a lot, which I don't know why they did that. I just want to point that out because I thought it was interesting that they kind of emphasized the full name for the blade. But either way, this whole episode uh, consisted of a lot of action, a lot of fighting that I wasn't expecting for this week. So. The beginning obviously starts off with where it left off. Sarada had like went underground somewhere. Uh, Boruto was about to fight uh, Kagura, and then of course uh, Chojuro was fighting th uh, three out of the seven ninja swordsmen and stuff like that. Uh, we see Shizuma in this episode. Not much, but we do see him. So the episode starts off after the intro with Sarada going after this one chick. I, I don't know what her fucking name is, and I don't really care to look it up at this current moment, because I don't want to have to stop the recording or whatever. But I'm just gonna call her the chick with the with Kiba. You know? Kiba fucking... I don't know. Like, So the, the fight continues. The fight starts. She has, she has her Sharingan activated. She narrowly escaped death a couple of times. Uh, she uses her Sharingan to kind of pull herself out of the mist, because there's like mist around this underground area. Uh, and then we go back straight into uh, Chojuro. He's still kind of sewn up in the needle, uh, or ra rather in the strength from the needle from that one other fucking girl. I don't know any other fucking names, dude. I'm just gonna say like Executioner's Blade, a Helmet Splitter, and fucking needle sword fucking I don't know I don't know what I don't know what any of their fucking names are anyways Chojo is, is telling the guy the one who has executioner's blade to you know not miss because it can be hard to hit a non-moving target and it's some, I had something at my mouth sorry um, I guess that is true because he moves his arm Chojo was really fucking cool in this episode he just dick on these kids which is what I wanted to happen last week, just for him to dick on these kids, and that's what happened. Uh, the kid with Executioner's Blade completely misses. Um, Chojuro grabs his sword, and slices all the needles away. And I, I, I just thought that was really cool because I was like, oh yeah, Chojuro's about to fucking slap these kids. He's about to spank them. <laughs> so the fight with Sarada is still going on. Uh, we actually see something new that we didn't see uh, from the filler, kind of like Seven Swordsman arc, you can say, it, in the War arc. Uh, we didn't see too much of the Seven Ninja Swordsman in the War arc, so there was there was a lot of stuff that could have been done that we didn't get to see. But the wielder of Kiba uh, then starts to do some kind of levitation bullshit with both of the blades, and she starts spinning them around, kind of like a, kind of like a spin wheel type of thing. Uh, if in all honesty, when the, this whole sequence of events that happened as this is happening, if you remember in Dragon Ball Z when Frieza used uh, the double death slicers, you know, basically dual destructive disc and stuff like that, his destructive disc move that he used on Namek, it reminded me of that. But the the end result doesn't happen the same way. It actually ends up a lot differently and pretty cool to be honest, because uh, Sarada ends up using some uh, her Sharingan Genjutsu, uh, which isn't that surprising, like she wasn't going to use it, but, you know, she does use some uh, some sort of Sharingan Genjutsu. She ends up in this water surrounded area. The chick with Kiba starts using some sort of attack called Snakehead, even though it's basically a, a whole shark formed in, like, lightning, which didn't make sense to why it was called Snakehead, but it looked more like a shark. I don't know, just... Basically, the the point for this attack was... It, it, 
it can deal damage, I assume so, but its main purpose is to like scout out for like any enemies in the surrounding area. Obviously in water, because I don't think it can work on land. Uh, she starts shooting off uh, lightning ball attacks, and that's actually what the, the move is actually called, lightning style. Uh, lightning ball and she starts just chucking those all around the fucking area trying to hit Sarada. Sarada's doing a pretty fucking good job of dodging him though. We go back to my chair keeps fucking going down. I don't know why. Uh, we go back to Boruto talking to Kagura and Kagura is like, ah, oh, you should have listened to me. You should have. You shouldn't have come here. Duh. And I'm like, oh, well, maybe you're right. I say maybe because Borto doesn't seem to be doing a fucking good job of what he's doing right now, but... Dude, I fucking hate my chair! <laughs> so anyways, we... After we finished that, kind of a pointless scene, but it was there. Uh, we go back to Chojuro. He starts fighting all three of them at once. Uh, the guy with helmet splitter slices his fucking sword in half, so it's like... Oh, do you think he'd be done there? No, we'll get back into what happens later on in the episode. Actually, you know, I'll just say it now. He pretty much just fucking wails and dicks on these fucking kids. Uh, he goes after the one with uh, the sewing needle sword. Just, uh, the chick throws the fucking sword at him, right? He literally... T All right, like, before this happens, he's going off to saying, like, Oh, you're afraid to get cut? And then the girl responds saying, "Well, what? Who doesn't like? Uh, who doesn't like to be cut? I don't think anybody likes to be cut, or what? I forget what she says." Um, and then he says, "Well, if you aren't prepared to the cut, you know, the be cut, or whatever." He says some. He says a cool fucking line. I don't remember what it is. I apologize for not memorizing it. But she throws the fucking needle at Chojuro. Chojuro takes it through his fucking shoulder completely walks through the rest of what was already in his fucking shoulder and then starts charging at her and knocks her out <laughs> yeah you, you have you have to see this for yourself because i saw it i was like oh oh i uh i i wasn't i wasn't expecting that <laughs> i like that that was that that was actually the last thing i expected for them to actually do in this episode because that's it's pretty gnarly, you know, and they've been kind of like kid friendly ish, child ish throughout the whole time, but they actually went with it. It was pretty good. He goes after the guy with the Executioner's Blade and he just gets dicked on. It wasn't that hard. And then the guy with Helmet Splitter, he just kind of falls to the crowd. <laughs> he pretty much was just like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm done. And he just falls on the ground. And then the guy with the sword with like a whole bunch of paper bombs, right? Uh, he's about to go after Chojuro, but then Iwabe shows up. Iwabe shows up just like out of nowhere. Uh, it, it was kind of hinted a little bit, you can say, that he was going to inevitably show up and help out Porto and stuff like that. But he shows up, he goes after that guy. They start clashing each other. Uh, Ki uh, not Kibo, Iwabe uses like his giant like earth style club thing that he has like with them at all times and then they clash right and then iwabe actually actually has at the at the bottom edge of his fucking club uh is a, a hidden sword that he has and he slices through the motherfucker and then the motherfucker with the paper bomb sword i, I don't know what a lot of these things are named i i feel like i knew him but now i just don't remember i'm just gonna call them what they are <laughs> So the guy lifts up the paper bomb weapon sword and lifts it up in the air and just detonates all the paper bombs. And it kind of it's just left off there. We don't know what happens next. We go back to the fight with Sarada. Sarada is kind of like at a stalemate. She doesn't want to get hit by a lot of these a lot of these attacks. Yada 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 stuff happens. Um, Sarada actually ends up getting close to this girl and then she ends up copying. Uh, her hand signs, because the thing with the Sharon gun that she was trying to stay away from the, from this whole time was she knew that the Sharon gun allows you to basically copy someone's like hand signs and essentially copy their jutsu and then use it against them. She gets close enough to where she can see her hands through the mist and then wield hand signs to be able to do a lot of the stuff that she was doing the whole time. 
Uh, it works out in her favor. We get a scene of uh, Amitsuki getting ready to go and kind of help out Porto and stuff like that. He has like this scroll with some sort of information about uh, Shizuma, I I'm guessing. Uh, we get another scene with Kagura and, and Shizuma. This is the scene that has Shizuma, but he's there for like a whole solid like three or five seconds, so it doesn't really matter. Um, Kagura starts throwing his fucking sword at the ground. It, uh, it kind of cuts off there, but we do see a scene where it's like, oh no, he's alright. Boruto's alright. He kind of dodged it. Um, the girl with Kiba kind of cloaked herself in a lightning armor. That's uh, like what it was called in the episode and the subtitles. Uh, the translated subtitles. Um, Sarada copies that as well, uh, uh, of course, trying to not hit an attack. And in that very instant, we actually get a little bit more of backstory, I guess you can say, with this girl who's using Kiba, uh, the swords. And also at that very instant, she also Sarada also casted uh, a visual prowess uh, Sharingan Genjutsu, so that was pretty interesting, I guess. Uh, we get more onto that, yada yada yada. Sarada notices something like the fucking snakehead, the uh, shark electric thing started going out with like bubbles and shit. That doesn't really matter for the rest of this episode because, eh, but she notices that, yada yada yada, kind of ends up in a spot where it's like, oh uh, yeah, Sarada's kind of like stuck in a stalemate. Uh, the girl knocks her kunai out of her hands and it's shown that she basically sliced her fucking head off but like I said she casted the genjutsu and you know none of what was just happening was you know really her so she's kind of like up in like the wall somewhere drops a kunai with a paper bomb and then it causes like a massive explosion because uh, electricity, oxygen, a whole bunch of science shit. You get, just watch the episode and you'll understand what I'm talking about. She drops a paper bomb, causes a massive explosion, and then uh, the girl who was using um, dual Kiva fangs, whatever, uh, Kiva the fang, uh, she's down in the water, kind of just knocked out. You saw where they used up a lot of her chakra, so she's knocked out as well. And then the episode kind of just ends off with uh, Boruto and Kagura getting ready to kind of have a fight. Stuff like that. So we're just going to have to wait and see uh, what happens next. Like I said, it just kind of it just kind of ends there. It kind of just ends so abruptly. And I was like, oh, that's it? It felt like there was so much more that could have happened. But no, that, that was the end of the episode. Uh, Kagura just kind of slams his fucking sword to the ground. Boruto dodges it. They say some shit, and then it kind of just ends. And I was like, oh, there could have been more, but no. But either way, this, this was actually like a really surprisingly good episode, in my opinion. There was a lot of stuff that it did pretty well that I wasn't expecting but they did it and I liked it it was interesting to watch it was fun to watch uh, kind of Sarada to kind of show off her abilities uh, with the Sharingan because we haven't seen <clears throat> we haven't seen her too much with the Sharingan so it was interesting seeing her fight with it uh, fight with the Sharingan like in battle for the first time you can say um, I mean, you can count, like, the Naruto Gaiden stuff, but I don't, I don't really count it, per se. But either way, the episode was pretty good. I I liked it, at least. I, uh, I didn't really see a lot of flaws in animation. I'm gonna have to look more into it to really tell you if it's good animation or not. But it, it was alright, you know. The fighting was good. Uh, dialogue interaction with the characters was pretty good it really surprised me when I first watched it I, I didn't expect the stuff that was gonna happen to be in the episode well it happened and I was like oh well I'm, I'm glad this kind of turned out the way that it did and if it didn't happen the way it would you know the episode wouldn't have been as good so I'm happy they did it like the way they did uh, hopefully they kind of you know keep this up with this arc and stuff because uh, man it's just like Borto like, I, I want to make a video on it like I was 
planning on um, well, like I was planning on doing for like a while. I just haven't gotten around to doing it, but I want to make a certain video uh, talking about the state of Borto and where it's at. Uh, that may or may not come uh, in, in the next few days, maybe maybe even later today if I get around to you know not being lazy and recording it. But whatever, you know that was that was that was a decent episode or an an above average episode. Not even above average. It was. <sighs> I'm contradicting myself a lot. I don't know why I'm doing it. But I'll just end it off with, it was a good episode, it was a great episode, it was fun watching, you should go watch it too, because why the fuck not? <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's the end of the episode, and that means that's the end of the review. I really have nothing else to say other than I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, be sure to drop a like, and if you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe for future content. Just like this, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Peace.